There's even some big pink balls with some white pumice chunks in it. Next one. The answer is, these layers are not sandstone out by Thorpe. These layers are something called lahars, which is a term that simply means a volcanic mud flow. Remember St. Helens erupting in 1980? We all remember the big plume of ash and the blasted hole in the mountain. Do you remember the stuff that flowed down the Tudor River and wiped out bridges? It was like liquid concrete. Right? It had some power to it. That's what a lahar is. That's what a volcanic mud flow looks like. It travels about 30 miles an hour. It's warm. It's not super hot. But it's got strength and it's got power to destroy anything in its path. And those lahars typically follow river valleys. And we have a history of that in our humble little Kittitas Valley. Turns out these guys are 10 million years old. So it's a much different volcano than Rainier or St. Helens but it's not sandstone. And this is part of this Ellensburg formation, this collection of rocks that have filled the Kittitas Valley. The next one. Oh, an artsy shot looking at some of the pumice and then some of these river rocks down below. Next. Uh, is there more of this kind of loose Ellensburg formation stuff in the valley? Sure, let's go over to Craig's Hill, right in town. Next one. Uh-huh, recognize that? We're in the old uh, John Wayne Trail, the Iron Horse thing. Next one. Uh, oh, okay, now we're over by the fair, Brian, you know, and you are elephant ear, and it's uh, <laughs> county fair time. Most people are looking at the livestock. Of course, we look here. Next one. Craig's Hill is actually a beautiful record of a lots of geology that happened over the last 10 million years. Next one. And if you walk up Indian Trail to the uh, water tower, about two-thirds of the way up. You're welcome to do this, by the way. It's a public <coughs> county land. Go up there and take a look. This is what you'll find. Next one, please. Okay, walk up the trail. Here's the next one. Right. There's a volcanic ash layer. It's about six inches thick. Next one. And that ash is very coarse. Very, 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 uh, uh, it's, 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 it's much coarser than the normal fine St. Helens ash that we have around here. And we have a date on that ash of five million years. And this is just part of this elaborate history of lake bottoms and river deposits and desert systems and then these volcanic ash layers. Next one, please. So here's that ash layer. We're still in Craig's Hill. Freeloader Hill is up on the top here. So sandstone, shale, ash, siltstone, these all have a specific story to tell about stuff coming in and filling the valley. Next one. Uh, yeah. Next one. Oh, right. So we've had students over there sampling the ash and getting ages for these layers. And this is fine print even for me to read, but they're all dates within the last 10 million years. Next one. All right. Some of you may know Steve. He's, he's a neighbor of mine in town here, but for his working life, he was out at the farm, Hillcrest Farm, out by Moore Road, down by Thrall. I went out to his place recently, last summer actually, uh, and some of his property has a story to tell with this Ellensburg formation. Next one, please. So here's out at Steve's place, next one. And we're up on his property looking north across Ellensburg, but I want to look at the geology right at his place. Next one, please. Uh, oh yeah, so here's an interesting image. Here's the valley. Ellensburg right in the middle. Here's the canyon, the Yakima River Canyon. Let's go to Moe's place, which is right here. Next one, please. Right there. Next one, please. Right there. Look at it. It's kind of a triangular piece of property that's actually elevated above the valley floor. Next one. So because it's elevated, his fields are up here high. We've got a beautiful cut. And again, much of this stuff that has filled the valley much of it river deposits, but also some volcanic deposits, like more of those lahars. There's lots of these old volcanic lahars that have dumped into our valley. Next one, please. Now, let's talk about the surface, and we'll go right up back out to Moe's place. Next one, please. There's this, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but, you know, our valley has surfaces that are flat, but they're not all at the same level. In other words, there's different levels of valley floor. You ever really kind of looked at that up high? It's like a big staircase. 
And the surprise to you, but maybe if you farm, this is not a surprise to you, maybe your field has a partner on the other side of the valley that's at the same, same elevation. There's a whole set of these fields, basically, that it's no accident that they are matching in elevation. These are old valley floors that have then been cut by younger, youthful action of the river. In other words, once upon a time, two million years ago, our valley floor was way up here. And then the river cut to a lower elevation, formed another floodplain, cut another floodplain. These are called terraces. Next one. So most places a terrace. I mentioned that his place was elevated, right? So here's, uh, we're looking up Menashtash Canyon here, and a big broad alluvial fan, but we're looking at the modern floodplain of the Yaka. I, I suppose the freeway's in here someplace. Next one. This is Moe's place. Look at how flat that is, but it's elevated. In other words, this used to be the valley floor, the bottom of the valley, but it no longer is because the river has cut down to its current level. What I'm saying is there's a dozen of these different valley floor levels from the past. Next one, please. More from Moe's place in the southern part of the valley. Next one. Uh, this is the other end of the valley. Again, this is out old road to Kaliyalam. Do you recognize this spot? We're looking south. From Hayward. Yeah, from Hayward Hill. Constance. Exactly right. Pardon? Tonson's place. Oh, what's the name? Dean Tonson. Dean. Oh, yes, right. And, um, and right behind here is Elk Heights. Here's the freeway climbing up and heading to Seattle. Kind of got, got your bearings now? I almost fell on you, by the way. I just thought I'd point that out. That would just be tragic. It'd be a story in the paper tomorrow. The geologist falls on patrons at the museum. Seven and eleven. Okay. Yakima River, modern floodplain, ancient floodplain. Look at that thing. This is the kind of stuff we look at and wonder how'd that form? Um, people that don't think about geology might go, oh, maybe a farmer was up there with a bulldozer or something. I don't know. <laughs> This is an old valley floor. Here's a modern valley floor. Again, we can continue throughout the rest of the valley and find many of these. Next one, please. Another shot of it. Old valley floor, modern valley floor. If you're curious why the river is cutting every once in a while, we have ideas about that, of course. One is tied to uh, glaciers advancing and retreating into the valley. And each time the valleys, excuse me, each time the glaciers retreated, <coughs> There was a lot of meltwater coming off, and there was energy to cut. Another idea is that there's uplift against the river, but we don't need to get into it. Next one. Uh, same area, but now we're looking kind of by the party barn. Anderson Ranch looking north. And again, I'm just pointing out another one of these, these old valley floors. Next one, please. All uh, right, we got it. Next one, please. Uh, okay, let's leave Highway 10 and let's go again to the surface of all this fill. I commonly get asked, did the glaciers up in the mountains ever come to Ellensburg? Did it ever come through Ellensburg? The answer is no. And my, the reply is always, well, how do you know that? Kind of snotty, by the way. <laughs> how do you know that? I say, well, let me try to convince you. Have you ever bought some antiques while also enjoying a beautiful piece of fruit? And they're like, what do you, what do you mean? Next to another. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, 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 I know that place. Okay, well, next time you're out there, look about three miles west of there. Next one. And you'll find a ridge that the freeway actually climbs over. That's a glacial moraine. And that's a ridge of loose rocks that was deposited by the ice. And that ridge of loose rocks marks the furthest advance of the ice down from the mountain. Let me show you. Next one, please. We're looking for a ridge that the glacier brought the rocks down and dumped them there. The glacier's long gone, but the ridge is still there. Let's see what it looks like. Next one, please. All right, you recognize this? So we got the Tainan coming down, Tainan Creek. And you're heading to Seattle, Seattle to see a show. And around the corner, we're going to climb this thing. The freeway actually splits the three lanes. This ridge, look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. 
That's as close as the glacier got to Ellensburg. That ridge, we can imagine a big glacier sitting right above this picture uh, in the past. Next one, please. So we're now not like, we're no longer looking at the, the old valley floors, we're looking at this now. That's the moraine. Next one. I climbed up on the moraine last fall and took some photos. There's all sorts of big rocks up there that the glacier brought down from Snoqualmie Pass. Next one. And here we are up looking at those loose rocks and looking back towards Ellensburg. And the fruit and antique is right there. Next one. Ah, oh, skip it. <laughs> uh, more stuff coming into the valley, not just glacial stuff, but ash coming from erupting volcanoes like Mount St. Helens in 1980. Next one. Uh, we're going to go through this quick. I want to get some time to do some question stuff. So, I'll uh, skip it. Next one. Uh, up in Rainier Park at sunrise, you dig a pit and you find layer after layer after layer of ash from past eruptions. That's up in Rainier Park itself. Some of them are truly Rainier, some of them are St. Helens, some of them are Adams, some of them are Glacier Peak. Mm -hmm. Our valley has some, not certainly not like this, but we do have some ash layers from prehistoric eruptions. Next one, please. So maybe you know this one. Anybody know where we are? Down the canyon, that's right. Two thirds way down the canyon, on the west side, above the tracks, Next time you'll know, let's see, what's a landmark? Um, oh, one of those recreation spots. Um, pine, is that pine, by the pine uh, recreation thing? Park? I think so, yeah, whatever, the, uh, new, the new place they just renovated, yes. There's also a highway marker there, a Beck Memorial Rock. Uh, I should have a better way to describe it. Anyway, you might recognize it. We got curious about that ash layer. It's a pretty fat one. You can see it from quite a ways away. Next one, please. That ash, we are now sure, is from Mount Rainier, 36,000 years ago. And there are one, two, three, four, five other ash layers in that cut. Some from St. Helens, 13,000 years ago, 36,000 years ago. Glacier Peak erupted 11,000. That's a volcano north of Stevens Pass. And then here's Crater Lake exploding almost 7,000 years ago. Uh, so there's a beautiful record there, and there are geologists who do nothing but this. They take ash layers and use the chemistry and the age to match them with volcanoes in the Northwest. Next one. Okay, we get it. Uh, out, recognize this. We're heading east over to Vantage, right? We're east of Kittitas. We're going to go under the trestle. This is the old, the old rail line. And, yeah, Boylston, right. Um, and we're going to go out on this, the secondary Boylston Road, and we're going to look at a little spot just north of the freeway. Next one, please. So here's a map. Uh, Interstate 90, Boylston. And let's look right north of the freeway. Next one. Beautiful ash that if you look for it, you can see, especially if you're driving east. You're elevated on the free, on the eastbound side to look. I wish I had a mile marker for you, I don't. This is an old photo from Don Ring, who some of you may know, and taught geology for 30 years at Central. I gave a lecture at this Ross Base thing, and Don came up afterwards and says, you know, y'all look at that Nizama ash out there by Kittitas. I'm like, what? I'd never heard of it. And it's now clear that this is Mazama ash from Crater Lake. And that's exciting because of what I'm about to tell you with some current work going on. Next one, please. Uh, 